Wait a sec, you're telling me there's going to be another Bitcoin fork? Ladies and gentlemen, yes there potentially will be, and this is the story of three Bitcoins. To understand what's going on, we really need to start from the top and rewind it back. So this is the chart of the number of transactions per day in the Bitcoin network. And as you can see, six years ago it was pretty small, but then the rapid growth into really high amounts. But why is this a problem? Well, if you watch my blockchain video, you'll understand that Bitcoin is just a chain of blocks. And each block has a limit to its size, which is one megabyte. This means that there can be only a set amount of transactions that each block can include. And each transaction being like me sending you coins, for example. And also because of how Bitcoin is designed, you can only add one block at a time so you can't solve future ones in advance. And so if there's a lot of transactions waiting around, it's just going to be a bottleneck. And so Bitcoin's network capacity right now is roughly three transactions per second. Meanwhile, Visa, on the other hand, has roughly 2,000 transactions per second. You can just get a gauge for the magnitude of difference. So this translates into long delays for processing when there's a lot of demand for the Bitcoin network, and also high fees, because if you want miners to include your transaction first, then you need to up your fees, it's simple supply and demand. And so these delays and fees are no good and people have been trying to solve this problem for a long time. So this is pretty much what the debate boils down to, um, and this is really simplified so I encourage you to go Google for more information after this. But basically one approach is to have big blocks or just increase the block size from one megabyte to something higher. And so this allows for more transactions to be put on the blockchain. And this really envisions Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer payment network. On the other hand, you have segregated witness, which is a different way to store transaction data. So you increase the number of transactions that can get fit into one block a little bit but also it enables off-chain scaling solutions such as the Lightning Network. So this really envisions Bitcoin as a settlement layer, and what this means is that most peer-to-peer -peer transactions happen on a different network, and then the net aggregate flow of funds is what's recorded on the actual blockchain. And so there are trade-offs to both approaches, and that includes issues such as scalability, usability, decentralization, the nature of forks, and more. With each debate comes different sides and major players involved. For example, you have the miners who prefer bigger blocks, the core developers who are the ones that code the Bitcoin protocol who prefer SegWit or segregated witness, businesses that kind of just want to compromise, and users like you and me who are just waiting to see what will happen to our future Lambos. And so this potential fork coming up in November is really just one event in a long string of events dating back to mid-2015, when the two different solutions were introduced to the world. In early 2016, people from different sides met up and came up with the Hong Kong Agreement, which is basically just a compromise between the two sides. However, as you can see, nothing really happened for over a year, and so they met again and came up with a New York agreement, which is also known as SegWit 2x, which is a compromise by including SegWit first into Bitcoin, and then second, increasing the block size to 2 megabytes. However, in August, when SegWit activated, another group also created Bitcoin Cash, which has a big block size already. And so now this second part of SegWit 2x is in jeopardy. We don't know if there's going to be a fork as planned to increase the block size to 2 megabytes because people are saying we already have Bitcoin Cash now. So what's the reason of following along with the second part of the plan? So there's a few possibilities as to what's going to happen. One is that the 2x part is not going to be activated because parties back out of this New York agreement. In that case, there will be no fork. Number two is that 2x activates, but most nodes support it. In that case, there's no fork because the second part of the fork is dead on arrival. The third and interesting case is when 2x activates 
and there's support for both sides of the chain. In that case, Houston, we have a fork, and there's three potential versions of Bitcoin. The 2x version, the SegWit-only version known as Core, and then Cash as well. And these are just some of the names floating around out there, and there's other names possible as well. So if there's a fork, what does that mean for us? Well, one, more free Bitcoins, right? I was pretty happy when I got free Bitcoin Cash from the earlier split in August. But also this means confusion for investors. During the Bitcoin Cash saga, a lot of people were asking, which one should I buy? They're unsure which one's going to be the real Bitcoin. Secondly, this causes confusion for users because not all exchanges or wallets will be supporting all these different versions. And so we really need to keep track of what's going to happen and stay tuned. Another question that comes up if a fork happens is which side will prevail? This is a hard question because on one hand, the miners are important. Their hash power provides the proof of work that secures the network. But on the other hand, the core developers are also important because they're the ones who code the blockchain improvements. So the question is, is there going to be demand and support for all versions of Bitcoin? The answer is, it really depends on the users and the ecosystem, because ultimately we need to decide which ones we're going to use, which ones we aren't, and the ecosystem will decide which ones will get business support. So in terms of the market impact, one side might prevail, or each side may get the coin of their dreams. So this could mean an end to this long feud, and confidence restored in Bitcoin and the broader cryptocurrency market. Or investors might sour if more Bitcoins appear, because there's just too much confusion going around. In that case, Ethereum could decouple from Bitcoin and finally surpass its market cap. Or the whole market could still move together with Bitcoin, and if Bitcoin drops, everything else drops. If Bitcoin rises, everything else rises. Finally, I want to end with just a quick public service announcement about Bitcoin Gold. There's a lot of confusion about there about this version of Bitcoin. It's actually a separate Bitcoin hard fork that's going to happen in late October. And the team that's creating this coin is not directly involved with the No 2x movement. They actually seem pretty disorganized and kind of sketchy to me, if you ask. And so please be careful when dealing with this Bitcoin Gold. Okay, everybody, that was it. I hope this helped clear up some confusion about this hard fork coming up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Give me a like, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.